Okay, we're ready here for our next video in the uh, Mr. Princhak uh, Video School Academy here. And uh, this is going to be a problem that shows how to do a hypothesis test for the regression um, analysis or the slope of a regression analysis. So hypothesis test for slope, basically. While, here's the problem. Wildlife researchers monitor many wildlife populations by taking aerial photographs. They try to predict the weight of the alligators by using their lengths. Once again, it's pretty hard to get an alligator on a scale. You know, like it's bitten and it's tough, dirty. Nobody wants to do that. So they want to estimate the weight of alligators accurately from the air. Again, by going to get the length from looking at the air and then try to um, estimate their weight. Here's a regression analysis of the weight of alligators in pounds and their length in inches based on data collected from captured alligators. And our sample size here um, was 30 alligators that we looked at. So the first thing I want you guys to recall is how to analyze one of these regression outputs here. And the key idea is looking at one of these, you need to be able to understand what the linear equation is or the line of best fit or the least squares regression line. And remember the formula for least squares regression line is the predicted y equals your y-intercept a plus your slope times x. Now, how do you know who's y and who's x? Well, underneath the word constant right here is always the x value. So length is x, therefore the other variable in this problem, which is weight, would be the y. So if we personalize this problem to write out the equation, it is that the predicted weight of an alligator is equal to the y-intercept, that's right next to the word constant, negative 393 plus my slope, which is right next to the x value, 5.9, times the length. Now let's recall what that slope means, and we use b for slope. So the slope of b is equal to 5.9, and you could put that over 1. Remember the 1 is the x, it's a small x there, the 5.9 is the y. So for every 1 inch of length, the predicted weight will go up by 5.9 pounds. So that's how you interpret the slope. Now, the key idea we need to realize in a regression analysis like this one is that the 5.9 was the slope that we got in our one sample of 30 alligators. If somebody else ran another sample, we could potentially get a different slope. In fact, if many, many, many samples were ran, there would be many, many, many slopes. And we want to try to run a hypothesis test to figure out if our slope is actually meaningful, meaning is there truly a relationship between length and width, or length and weight of an alligator? Now, first off, our R squared value alone tells us that there probably is a pretty good relationship between the two, because 83.6% of the variation in weight is explained by the variation in length. So that's pretty strong. So we're assuming there is some kind of connection here. We just want to learn how to run a hypothesis test to show that. So remember. A B right here is our actual slope from the sample. So what is the slope of the population of all alligators? All alligators in the entire world, length versus width, what is the slope? Well, we don't know. So what we actually call the true slope is beta, just so you know. And this has nothing to do with the beta from type 2 error. It's just a capital B. It's kind of like using a mu for the true average or P for the true slope. This is the true slope. Again, honestly, if you would call that B, it's fine. It's probably not going to be the end of the world here. So what we want to do is we have a null hypothesis because we are running a test and we have an alternative hypothesis. So this is step one, our hypothesis. So the null hypothesis would be that there is no slope, meaning the true slope is equal to zero. If the slope was zero, that would tell us that there is absolutely no relationship between length and weight. And that's what we have to assume. And the alternative hypothesis is that there is a relationship, meaning the slope is not equal to zero. Remember, that could be a positive relationship, bigger length, bigger weight, or it could even be a negative relationship. You know that wouldn't make sense. It could be where a um, bigger length would actually mean a smaller weight. Now, those are our hypotheses. Step two would be, I'll come over here and do step two for our conditions. The first condition is real simple. It had to be a random sample. We couldn't just choose the 10 or 30 biggest alligators or smallest alligators. We had to make sure it was random. Two, our scatter plot has to be straight. And if you guys recall anything from the regression unit, um, your scatter plot of the weights and lengths needs to be straight. And also, 
The third condition should also sound familiar. The residual plot should show no pattern at all. And remember the reason why that was is basically we should have some small residuals, some big residuals, some positive residuals, some negative residuals, showing that the line is actually going right through our data. So those are the three conditions you need to have. Most of the times on AP tests, they'll give you the scatter plot, they'll give you the residual plot, so you can check those things really easily rather than checking them on your own. Now the third thing is your work, and to be honest, all the work is actually done for you. But I'm gonna show how to get it real quick here. Now because this does deal with slope, um, this is a T-score. And a t-score is the slope you saw. For us, that was 5.9 minus the slope we were supposed to see. Well, we were anticipating no slope. That's the, that's the uh, null hypothesis divided by our standard error. Now, wait a minute here. Look right here. Standard error of the slope is given to you. You don't even have to calculate. There's no work involved. It's right next to the actual slope. So 0.5448. Now, if you take out your calculator and calculate this value, where you get 5.9 divided by 0 .5, 0 0.5448, guess what you get? You get 10.8296. And believe it or not, that value was also given to you. They tell you the T value in the regression analysis. So that value is given to you. So you don't even really need to calculate that. You could just like right here for the T value. And now the P value would be um, found, again, this we're looking for the P value. And that P value would be found by doing a TCDF. We're going to look at 10.8. Now you should realize right away that 10.8296 is a crazy high um, T score. Comma 99, comma, remember. If you remember, we talked about this before. When you're working with slope, because there are two variables, you need to subtract two for your degrees of freedom. So your sample size dot minus two would be 28 degrees of freedom. And if you do this on the calculator, you get a crazy low value, tons of zeros. So your p-value is 0 .000, more zeros, more zeros. It's very, very small. In fact, they even tell you that in the regression output. So all the information you need is given to you. So they're even telling you, hey, your p-value is very, very small, less than 0.001. They didn't even have enough room to put all the zeros you needed. So with much, such a small p-value, we would obviously reject the null. And the idea here is we're rejecting the null. We're saying that it's no way the slope is zero. The slope is definitely not zero, which means there is a relationship between these two variables of length and width. So you'd say reject the null. There is plenty of evidence, plenty of evidence with such a low p-value that the um, true relationship is not zero, meaning, in fact, there is a relationship. And I want to quickly show you another question. I want to go through the same idea here with a second problem here. This is the Burger King problem we've looked at in the past. We looked at 30 sandwiches from Burger King, and we looked at protein versus fat. And could we use, remember, the X right here is underneath the word constant. So can we use protein to predict fat right here? Um, so let's just go through this problem real quick, okay? So our null would be that the true slope is equal to zero. The alternative hypothesis would be that the true slope is not zero. So again, you could even use words here. So slope of zero means no relationship. And I'm sure I spelled that wrong, but we're going to move on anyway. And the alternative would be, yes, there is a relationship. Because if you don't have a slope of zero, that means you have a relationship. Now, next, we would need our conditions. So somewhere we need to see that the scatter plot is straight. Somewhere we would need to see that the residual plot shows no pattern. So step two here, or actually that was the condition, so we'll jump to step three real quick, is our work. But all the work's given to us. Our T-score right here, 8.04. That is an extremely high Z-score. I'm sorry, T-score. Very, very high. Don't even have to do the work to find it. Also, the P-value. Look, they're telling us that the P-value with such a high T-score is going to be well less than 0 0.001. So with such a small P-value, we would, of course, reject the null. 
And that tells us there is plenty of evidence to claim that there is a relationship. So I'm going to reject this null. There is plenty of evidence that there is a relationship between fat and protein in a sandwich. So it's very, very easy to run a um, test, a hypothesis test for a regression output. Happens all the time on the AP exam, and they even give you everything you need to calculate it all, and they even give you the values. Here's right here is your T score, and here right here is your um, P value. Now, again, we never do anything with the y-intercept. It's needed for the equation, but it's not needed for our st standard error, t-ratio, p-value. None of that is needed. So, you know, hopefully you're watching these videos. Um, they make a lot of sense. Um, if you're not watching the videos, I mean, it's like, write, it's like writing with a broken pencil. You know, it's pointless. Pointless to write with a broken pencil. Pointless. Totally pointless.